Good evening, Pahrump. I'm Dr. Michael Reiner, your host, co-host with Dr. Christensen on the Monday Night Show. Uh, yeah, to the producer, we do have, I guess we do have a little more echo than I thought. Yeah, there, but anyway, there's some echo. Yeah. Um, so, Pahrump, you like our, Craig got these, he got one for me and one for the show, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, so after last night's debate, I really do like this uh, Hillary for prison, right? And we... She says no, but no, I say yes. You're going to prison. <laughs> and Trump, you're going to make America great again? Yes, he's going to make America great again. So there you go. Anyway, um, we'll try not to keep it political, but we will. Uh, <laughs> uh, so anyway, the call-in number 727-8750. Uh, hopefully we've got our usual entourage of people calling in uh, just to uh, start the uh, show and you know we might make it a little more political since it's uh, that time of the year instead of medical uh, might as well I mean, well what the you hell, know right? we, we could discuss the basket of deplorables or I mean we could have locker room talk if you guys are interested yeah no I don't want to I don't want to go there but we all know that that uh, it's really unfortunate uh, you know how people can get away with that stuff. So we got Ray. Thank you, Ray, calling in. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, Ray the Flagman here. I just wish Noah happy birthday. He's 20 years old today. Do you guys know that? No. I had no idea. He doesn't hey, look a day over Happy birthday to Noah. He's your engineer tonight. So. <laughs> I swear to God, I, the other day, it was like he was Superman, Clark Kent. You know, he's got that, <laughs> he's got that uh, little curly cue. If he had put on some glasses, I swear to God, he, he, would, he would fit the, uh, fit the part. So... I was thinking when he was like 14 years old, uh, uh, 10, 10, 10, when he was 14, the date was 10, 10, 10, wow. October 10th, 2010. So there you go. There you go. Happy birthday. All right. A couple of questions I got. First of all, I talked to a friend of mine who's, uh, who goes to the VA hospital in Vegas, and he's losing a lot of weight. He has cancer, and they refused to let him use any medical marijuana. And I think that's something that's atrocious that a veteran who actually needs this, and they tell him that he can't use it, that if he comes up dirty in, in the blood, that uh, the, he may lose his medical benefits through the VA. Is this possible, Doc, or is this just something that some, some doctor told him over there, don't use it? Well, I think you need to realize who's paying the bills at the veterans, the feds, and the feds have never acknowledged marijuana. So that's the reason they don't approve it, because it's a federally funded program. So they can't be on the side of approving marijuana. So I think he would have, you know, a good case if they were to take away his benefits, because inside the state, because marijuana is a state's right. It's not a federal right. Um, that's why your federal firearms issues and all these other things come into play when the state legalizes marijuana, the feds still control the Second Amendment, and so that, that has a lot to do with it, um, even though they're kind of co-mingled, but that's why you get these big insurance plans like Healthcare Partners and Sierra Health and mm -hmm. a lot of those will not let their doctors prescribe or sign off on marijuana cards, even though the state gives them the right to do it. They don't want to risk that the feds come in and say, you're you're doing that. We don't approve of it, um, and that's Take why these funding. yeah that's why these dispensaries don't have Mastercard and Visa because it's all federal money. Um, so that has a lot to 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 the reason why the VA. Uh, well, that's why the the people that are dispensing of it can have bank accounts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can't. They have to deal in cash. So and that's why the the uh, Mastercard and Visa problem. They all they have some ATMs in there, but I'm sure if if the people knew that the ATMs were in there, uh, they might, because that's a wire transfer. An ATM purchase or an ATM is a wired fee. So um, they could say that that's illegal if they knew it, and they would, they would have to, you know, pull them out of the dispensaries. Um, but they go under the radar because, you know, and, it, and if it becomes legal on Proposition 2, um, then that, probably, you know, all that's going to do is just flood more money, make it harder to, to deal with that. But that's my answer on that one. Well, it's absurd that something that will probably help him because he's losing weight like crazy, he has no appetite, he can't eat, 
He just doesn't have the appetite, and they would deny him this. Our government, I mean, after he serves in, you know, in the armed forces, to den deny him something that will help him, it's well, ridiculous. That's well, what's wrong with this country. I uh, mean, it's just absurd at some of the things they do. No, I, I agree, but, you know, they do allow people to buy or purchase Marinol or uh, Dravenol, mm -hmm. which is pure THC in a pill form. So the VA should be able to write that form. Okay, so the FDA and the feds are behind that because I guess it's something they approve. So they approve it in that form, but they won't prove it in an agricultural form. Yeah, so I can tell him that they will probably give him Marinol if he pushes for it, that they may Absol help him out? Oh, absolutely they should. I mean, because that's a legal prescription. And that's sometimes I tell people that work in certain places and things of that nature that, um, it, it sometimes if you're going to smoke marijuana or use marijuana, it's probably not a bad idea to have a prescription for Marinol uh, because that way it helps to break up the positive urine screens. At least you have a, a legal prescription for that as opposed to a marijuana card. CYA, huh? Well, you know, there is a way, there is a way to detect, okay, if they really want to do an in-depth urinalysis, they can, they can, but most people are just doing nanogram testing for THC. So there is a way if you wanted to get really specific about it, but most people aren't doing that. Most people are just looking for THC and in the quantity. So um, I didn't even know that until it came up as a person who was under the employ of a bigger corporation got somebody to write them a prescription for Marinol, and when they turned in a positive urine for THC, then they flipped the prescription out. Mm -hmm. And they said, I got a legal prescription. And you're like, okay, I can't do anything to you, right? I mean, at that point, you've got a legal prescription. Even though you got a marijuana card, nobody really knows which one's which. So for those people that are working in, in jobs and got a marijuana card, especially HR doesn't uh, accept that, they will accept the fact that when, okay, so let's suppose Craig is working at MGM and you basically um, decide that you're going to, you know, you want to use marijuana because you have chronic pain from arthritis, from whatever you're doing. So you get the card. But then something happens at work and they test you for your urine. You have to produce a prescription for what's ever in your urine. Mm -hmm. Okay? So now you can produce that prescription for the Dravenol and you can say, well, the doctor prescribed it for me for... You don't have to tell them why they prescribed it. That's none of their business. That's absolutely none of their business. You do not have to divulge your medical records. So you basically say, I've got a prescription and you show them the bottle. That's the end of it. The end of the discussion. See, I learn something every day. That's why I listen to your show, because there's always points that you make that I was not aware of, and yeah. I thank you for that. Yeah. My second question is, I saw a film yesterday, a videotape. Chuck Augustine gave me one. It's called Generation RX, and it's about how these kids in school are being fed uh, Ritalin, uh, Zoloft, and Prozac, and it's screwing them up. And some of them are committing suicide, and yet it's being pushed. Sometimes the teacher says they're unruly or whatever. We're starting a whole generation of, of addicts because of the school system and what's going on, and Big Pharma want to push these pills. And I believe something's got to be done because when I watched this, I was completely outraged. I couldn't believe it was that bad. I thought there was occasionally somebody that was out of control and they gave them a script. But it's, it's widespread, Doc. It's widespread. Well, you know it is, and, and we live in a society where, unfortunately, there's a pill for everything. I mean, you either, what I find is you are either medically, medically inclined or you're holistically inclined. And if you're holistically inclined, you don't want to poison anything in your body. And if you're medically inclined, you want to do that. So there's a lot of pressure. Listen, let's, let's look at the school for, for, say, for sake, okay, this is a, a system that is, I mean, why was school created? Why, were, why was our school created? Because we went through an industrial age in the 20s. So people had to be able to organize and work in a factory, mm -hmm. and that's why schools exist, okay? So today, we're now 
outside of that realm. We don't have any manufacturing in the U.S., so everything is thinking, but we're still stuck in the school district. So we haven't lost, we haven't made that transition mm -hmm. to a higher level of technology where the school system will become defunct. Um, and so people don't know how to regulate people. I mean, we have so many other things that distract students and phones and things that we didn't have before. Um, but anyway, we got to go to break. And Ray, hang on because those are really good topics, and we can talk about it when we come back. So. I'll call back later. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thanks, Thanks, Ray. Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Reiner, your host of The Independent Doctors of Pahrump, a TV show that airs Monday night on Channel 46. I want to remind you that I am a practicing physician in Pahrump, and I'm an independent practitioner, which means I am not bought by any insurance company or corporate medicine. We provide the highest level of care. We have nurse practitioners. We have other physicians, specialists who come to our office. Please come visit me. I'm at 1316 East Calvada here in the heart of Pahrump. Thank you.